Lipids are a heterogeneous group of water-insoluble, hydrophobic, organic molecules. Because of their insolubility in polar solvents, body lipids are generally found compartmentalized, as in the case of membrane-associated lipids or droplets of triacylglycerol in adipocytes, or transported in plasma in association with protein, as in lipoprotein particles, or on albumin. Lipids are a major source of energy for the body, and they also provide the hydrophobic barrier that permits partitioning of the aqueous contents of cells and subcellular structures. Lipids serve additional functions in the body, for example, some fat-soluble vitamins have regulatory or coenzyme functions, and the prostaglandins and steroid hormones play major roles in the control of the body's homeostasis. Not surprisingly, Deficiencies or imbalances of lipid metabolism can lead to some of the major clinical problems encountered by physicians, such as atherosclerosis, diabetes, and obesity. Digestion, absorption, secretion, and utilization of dietary lipids The average daily intake of lipids by U.S. adults is about 81 grams, of which more than 90% is normally triacylglycerol. TAG, formerly called triglyceride. The remainder of the dietary lipids consists primarily of cholesterol, cholesterol esters, phospholipids, and unesterified, free, fatty acids. The digestion of dietary lipids is summarized in the picture. Processing of dietary lipid in the stomach. The digestion of lipids begins in the stomach, catalyzed by a lipase, lingual lipase that originates from glands at the back of the tongue. Tag molecules, particularly those containing fatty acids of short or medium chain length, fewer than 12 carbons, such as are found in milk fat, are the primary target of this enzyme. These same tags are also degraded by a separate gastric lipase, secreted by the gastric mucosa. Both enzymes are relatively acid-stable with pH optimums of pH 4 to pH 6. These acid lipases play a particularly important role in lipid digestion in neonates, for whom milk fat is the primary source of calories. They also become important digestive enzymes in individuals with pancreatic insufficiency such as those with cystic fibrosis. Lingual and gastric lipases aid these patients in degrading tag molecules especially those with short to medium chain length fatty acids, despite a near or complete absence of pancreatic lipase. Emulsification of dietary lipid in the small intestine The critical process of emulsification of dietary lipids occurs in the duodenum. Emulsification increases the surface area of the hydrophobic lipid droplets so that the digestive enzymes, which work at the interface of the droplet and the surrounding aqueous solution, can act effectively. Emulsification is accomplished by two complementary mechanisms, namely, use of the detergent properties of the conjugated bile salts and mechanical mixing due to peristalsis. Bile salts, made in the liver and stored in the gallbladder, are amphipathic derivatives of cholesterol. Conjugated bile salts consist of a hydroxylated sterile ring structure with a side chain to which a molecule of glycine or taurine is covalently attached by an amide linkage. These emulsifying agents interact with the dietary lipid particles and the aqueous duodenal contents, thereby stabilizing the particles as they become smaller from peristalsis and preventing them from coalescing. Degradation of dietary lipids by pancreatic enzymes the dietary tag, cholesterol esters, and phospholipids are enzymically degraded, digested, by pancreatic enzymes, whose secretion is hormonally controlled. Triacylglycerol degradation, tag molecules are too large to be taken up efficiently by the mucosal cells of the intestinal villi. They are, therefore, acted upon by an esterase, pancreatic lipase which preferentially removes the fatty acids at carbons 1 and 3. The primary products of hydrolysis are, thus, a mixture of two monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids. Note, this enzyme is found in high concentrations in pancreatic secretions, 
2%, 3% of the total protein present, and it is highly efficient catalytically, thus ensuring that only severe pancreatic deficiency, such as that seen in CF, results in significant malabsorption of fat. A second protein, colipase, also secreted by the pancreas, binds the lipase at a ratio of 1 colon 1 and anchors it at the lipid aqueous interface. Colipase restores activity to lipase in the presence of inhibitory substances like bile salts that bind the micelles. Note, colipase is secreted as the zymogen, procolipase, which is activated in the intestine by trypsin. Or listed, an anti-obesity drug, inhibits gastric and pancreatic lipases, thereby decreasing fat absorption, resulting in weight loss. Cholesterol ester degradation, most dietary cholesterol is present in the free, nonesterified, form, with 10% 15% present in the esterified form. Cholesterol esters are hydrolyzed by pancreatic cholesterol ester hydrolase, cholesterol esterase, which produces cholesterol plus free fatty acids. Activity of this enzyme is greatly increased in the presence of bile salts. Phospholipid degradation, pancreatic juice is rich in the proenzyme of phospholipase A2 that, like procolipase, is activated by trypsin and, like cholesterol ester hydrolase, requires bile salts for optimum activity. Phospholipase A2 removes one fatty acid from carbon-2 of a phospholipid, leaving a lysophospholipid. For example, phosphatidylcholine the predominant phospholipid of digestion, becomes lysophosphatidylcholine. The remaining fatty acid at carbon-1 can be removed by lysophospholipase, leaving a glyceryl phosphoryl base, for example, glyceryl phosphorylcholine, that may be excreted in the feces, further degraded, or absorbed. Control of lipid digestion Pancreatic secretion of the hydrolytic enzymes that degrade dietary lipids in the small intestine is hormonally controlled. Cells in the mucosa of the lower duodenum and jejunum produce a small peptide hormone, cholecystokinin, in response to the presence of lipids and partially digested proteins entering these regions of the upper small intestine. Cholecystokinin acts on the gallbladder, causing it to contract and release bile a mixture of bile salts, phospholipids, and free cholesterol, and on the exocrine cells of the pancreas, causing them to release digestive enzymes. It also decreases gastric motility, resulting in a slower release of gastric contents into the small intestine. Other intestinal cells produce another small peptide hormone, secretin, in response to the low pH of the chyme entering the intestine. Secretin causes the pancreas to release a solution rich in bicarbonate that helps neutralize the pH of the intestinal contents, bringing them to the appropriate pH for digestive activity by pancreatic enzymes. Absorption of lipids by intestinal mucosal cells, or enterocytes. Free fatty acids, free cholesterol, and 2-monoacylglycerol are the primary products of lipid digestion in the jejunum. These plus bile salts and fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, form mixed micelles, that is, disc-shaped clusters of a mixture of amphipathic lipids that coalesce with their hydrophobic groups on the inside and their hydrophilic groups on the outside. Mixed micelles are, therefore, soluble in the aqueous environment of the intestinal lumen. These particles approach the primary site of lipid absorption, the brush border membrane of the enterocytes, mucosal cell. This membrane is separated from the liquid contents of the intestinal lumen by an unstirred water layer that mixes poorly with the bulk fluid. The hydrophilic surface of the micelles facilitates the transport of the hydrophobic lipids through the unstirred water layer to the brush border membrane where they are absorbed. Bile salts are absorbed in the terminal ileum with less than 5% being lost in the feces. Note, relative to other dietary lipids, cholesterol is only poorly absorbed by the enterocytes. 
drug therapy can further reduce cholesterol absorption in the small intestine. Short and medium chain length fatty acids are water soluble and, thus, do not require the assistance of mixed micelles for absorption by the intestinal mucosa. Resynthesis of triacylglycerols and cholesterol esters The mixture of lipids absorbed by the enterocytes migrates to the endoplasmic reticulum where biosynthesis of complex lipids takes place. Using the fatty acyl coenzyme A derivatives, the two monoacylglycerols absorbed by the enterocytes are converted to tags through sequential resolations by two acyl transferases, acyl coenzyme A monoacylglycerol acyl transferase and acyl CoA diacylglycerol acyl transferase. Lysophospholipids are resolated to form phospholipids by a family of acyl transferases, and cholesterol is esterified with a fatty acid primarily by acyl coenzyme A cholesterol acyl transferase. Note, virtually all long chain fatty acids entering the enterocytes are used in this fashion to form triacylglycerols, phospholipids, and cholesterol esters. Short and medium chain length fatty acids are not converted to their coenzyme A derivatives and are not reesterified to 2 monoacylglycerol. Instead, they are released into the portal circulation, where they are carried by serum malbumin to the liver. Lipid malabsorption Lipid malabsorption, resulting in increased lipid, including the fat-soluble vitamins and essential fatty acids, in the feces, a condition known as steatorrhea, can be caused by disturbances in lipid digestion and or absorption. Such disturbances can result from several conditions, including cystic fibrosis, causing poor digestion, and short bowel syndrome, causing decreased absorption. The ability of short and medium chain length fatty acids to be taken up by enterocytes without the aid of mixed micelles has made them important in dietary therapy for individuals with malabsorption disorders. Secretion of lipids from enterocytes The newly resynthesized triacylglycerols and cholesterol esters are very hydrophobic and aggregate in an aqueous environment. It is, therefore, necessary that they be packaged as particles of lipid droplets surrounded by a thin layer composed of phospholipids, unesterified cholesterol, and a molecule of the protein apolipoprotein B48. This layer stabilizes the particle and increases its solubility, thereby preventing multiple particles from coalescing. Note, microsomal triglyceride transfer protein is essential for the assembly of these, and other, triacylglycerol-rich apolipoprotein B containing particles in the endoplasmic reticulum. The lipoprotein particles are released by exocytosis from enterocytes into the lacteals, lymphatic vessels originating in the villi of the small intestine. The presence of these particles in the lymph after a lipid-rich meal gives it a milky appearance. This lymph is called chyle, as opposed to chyme the name given to the semi-fluid mass of partially digested food that passes from the stomach to the duodenum, and the particles are named chylomicrons. Chylomicrons follow the lymphatic system to the thoracic duct and are then conveyed to the left subclavian vein, where they enter the blood. Note, once released into blood, chylomicrons pick up A polypoproteins E and C2. Use of dietary lipids by the tissues Triacylglycerol contained in chylomicrons is broken down primarily in the capillaries of skeletal and cardiac muscle and adipose tissues. Triacylglycerols in chylomicrons is degraded to free fatty acids and glycerol by lipoprotein lipase. This enzyme is synthesized primarily by adipocytes and muscle cells. It is secreted and becomes associated with the luminal surface of endothelial cells in the capillary beds of the peripheral tissues. Note, familial lipoprotein lipase deficiency, type I hyperlipoproteinemia, is a rare, autosomal recessive disorder caused by a deficiency of lipoprotein lipase or its coenzyme apolipoprotein C2. The result is fasting chylomicronemia and hypertriacylglycerolemia. Fate of free fatty acids 
the free fatty acids derived from the hydrolysis of triacylglycerol may either directly enter adjacent muscle cells or adipocytes or be transported in the blood in association with serum malbumin until they are taken up by cells. Note, serum malbumin is a large glycoprotein secreted by the liver. It transports a number of primarily hydrophobic compounds in the circulation, including free fatty acids and some drugs. Most cells can oxidize fatty acids to produce energy. Adipocytes can also resterify free fatty acids to produce triacylglycerol molecules, which are stored until the fatty acids are needed by the body. Fate of glycerol Glycerol released from triacylglycerol is taken up from the blood and phosphorylated by hepatic glycerol kinase to produce glycerol 3-phosphate which can enter either glycolysis or gluconeogenesis by oxidation to dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Fate of the remaining chylomicron components After most of the triacylglycerol has been removed, the chylomicron remnants, which contain cholesterol esters, phospholipids, apolipa proteins, fat-soluble vitamins, and a small amount of triacylglycerol, bind to receptors on the liver. Apolipoprotein E is the ligand, and are endocytosed. The intracellular remnants are hydrolyzed to their component parts. Cholesterol and the nitrogenous bases of phospholipids, for example, choline, can be recycled by the body. Note, if removal of remnants by the liver is decreased due to impaired binding to their receptor, they accumulate in the plasma. This is seen in the rare type 3 hyperlipoproteinemia, also called familial dysbeta-lipoproteinemia.